for some fun spring DIY projects, then stay tuned because I have some coming up for you right now. Hey guys, my name is Annalie and welcome to my DIY channel or welcome if you are coming back. I have some fun spring projects that I have done for you guys and I hope you enjoy them. So let's get right into the video. Our first project for this video is going to be so simple. This is just using one of those little box trays that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They're really popular and usually there almost every time that you go. And I'm going ahead and I'm just gonna be painting this white with Waverly White Chalk Paint, as you can see. So I think I give this two coats of the Waverly Chalk Paint and then I go ahead and just let it. I love using these little boxes and I actually get a lot of ideas and inspiration from other YouTubers. So a lot of what you will see in today's video is actually inspired from other YouTubers, which I will be giving them credit. Once that was completely dry, I went ahead and I wanted to make it look um, farmhouse, of course. I wanted to kind of distress it and rough it up a little bit. Also guys, you will see that oftentimes I know that if you are not new here, then this is not a new story for me. but. Um, I actually didn't have a lot of the foam paint brushes left and so I was like well all right cool I have paper towels so I went ahead and I just put some paint dabbed it um, on a tape a paper towel and just kind of went around the edges it worked out fine for me for distressing because I wasn't using it for painting anything and what was nice about it is it kind of almost worked like a chippy brush where it wasn't like a consistent pressure so when I was sliding it up and down the board it was it was working because it wasn't pushing everything down the way like evenly is what I'm trying to say and then of course I gave it a light layer of sanding just to kind of rough it up and make it look a little bit more rustic um, this is some ribbon that I got from Walmart I actually got this around Christmas time which it worked out perfect because I think it was like right after Christmas maybe and so I got it on clearance but it works out really good for farmhouse um, items and DIYing and decor so I went ahead and I cut myself a bow And I just put this right here at the bottom of my board. You guys can do whatever you want to decorate these boards. These are actually really fun to decorate. So if you wanted to do jute twine, if you wanted to do ribbon, if you wanted to leave it blank, if you wanted to put a Cricut decal on here, I'm actually going to be doing that in upcoming videos. I know that Whiskey and Wit does a lot of things like that with these little boards. I have kind of been pin watching her lately and loving her and getting a lot of inspiration from her and everything that she makes is something that I would want in my house. So I do glean a lot of ideas from her. So if you guys get a chance, go check her out. I'll have her link down below. But this little board is so cute and so easy. Just a layer of paint, tied a bow, and then I got these little alligator clips from Walmart. They're not alligator clips, they're like little clamp clips but I glued that on with some hot glue. And then this is just some scrapbook paper that you can get from Joann's. I grabbed a couple of these. These were from last season. I don't know if they have them this year, but they are so cute because they look like little seed packets. I've actually seen a couple YouTubers using these because they are darling. Uh, to give the, the paper a little bit more dimension against the white, I did the same thing with the paint going around the edges, and that really helped it stand out. But what I love is you could put anything onto this little clamp. So if you don't want to use the cute little seed packet papers, you could do um, cute little notes. You could do letters if you had like a handwritten letter from someone. Here you see that I change out the different seed packets so that you could change them throughout the seasons. And I even put a photograph on here. So if you wanted to use it for like a cute little photograph, then this could also be like a little frame. And I know that Whitney does um, a lot of cute frames with these boxes. So thank you, Whitney, for the inspiration. Here it is with the photograph. I just love it, you guys. So easy to make. All right, for this project, this is another simple, easy one. This is just from the Dollar Tree as well. This is another one of those cute little framed chalkboard stands. I love using these for anything photographs because they stand up on their own and these are now $1.25, but they're still super cheap. Easy to use. I have um, another video coming up with some of them that I use as well, so I can show you a couple different ways of how I use them. But for this particular one, I went ahead and just stayed with my white theme that I'm kind of doing this video. And I just painted the outer edges with um, a layer of white chalk paint. 
I didn't worry about getting paint onto the black chalkboard part because you can see that I'm just going to be putting some scrapbook paper over it. So I just kind of measured it out and then used my cutting um, cutter to cut out a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, I believe this scrapbook paper also came from Joann's. Um, after I roughed it up a little bit and made it look a little bit more rustic, I just used a glue stick to put some glue on there and onto the paper so that I could glue this down and then just used um, one of those little squeegees to kind of smooth everything out and this fit perfectly. I wanted a very neutral background for this so that I could use it for a various number of things. Um, again, using um, one of those little clamps. I got these on Amazon in a package. I will link them down below for you because they were very cheap and they come in various sizes. I think I got a bag of them. I got a bag of like 50 of them for like $12 or something like that. So whatever it was that I used or something similar, I'll link it down below for you guys. And I actually want to get a few more sizes. Um, here I'm just using some boxwood greenery that you can pick up from Walmart. I used the actual wires from the stems themselves pulled up all the greenery and then kind of formed a little wreath shaped circle and then I'm just re-gluing the stems back on to make a very small mini wreath right here so you can see that it's just it was very easy I used the wire that I was already in the greenery and then I just grabbed a piece of jute twine tied it around so that I could have it as a little hanger and this little guy is basically done and um, it's kind of a multi-purpose use too. These are great for small areas as filler. You could put these on tiered trays, you could put these on floating shelves, you could put these just kind of with your decor right here. And so I love this, you guys. This is just so simply farmhouse. And then if you wanted to change it up too, you don't have to use a wreath. You could put cute little paper signs in there as well or leave it blank. I even like it just leaving it blank. I think I might do a couple of them and just leave them blank and do the greenery. And then um, I also put a photograph up there so that you guys could see how that looks too. But my favorite way is with the little wreath. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know which one was your favorite way. Okay, here's those box signs again. Um, this is an exact project that I learned from Whitney over on her channel, Whiskey and Wit. Like I said, you guys, I've been binge watching her. So I went ahead and I stained these in the color Jacobian in Minwax stain. And then I just hot glued these together with Gorilla Glue and they hold up so well. They are a little bit different um, sizes. So when you are picking them out a little tip, just try to find some that are very similar in size so that you can stack them as signs. But I just used my Cricut and I designed this cute little saying myself. I didn't make up the saying. I've seen this on the internet. I actually first saw this in a friend's home. And so I just designed this on my own um, to in, in Cricut, basically just with a uh, in canvas. I don't know how to do a VSG file yet, so I will figure out how to do that. I've been trying to watch some YouTube tutorials on that, so I want to learn how to do the VSG files so that I can link them down below for you guys. But I really just used this saying and I just picked out a font that I liked on top, which I will also get the font names for you. And then I just did a really cute font for the word family. And then I just searched greenery and then did a little sprig of greenery. And then I just stacked them up on each other, measuring them out to the width and height of my frame that I put this on, or I guess my base, my box, my box base. And then um, just using the stencil technique, I weeded it out like a stencil. You can see that I did white chalk paint for all the lettering and then some green, I think it's called moss, but it's by Waverly. Some green just to kind of add a little bit of color with the white. The white and green always look so good to me on stained wood. I just, I love that look. It is such a farmhouse look. It's just traditional, it looks so good. And then I just took everything off so you guys will be able to see what it says here in just a minute, but it's just a cute little sign that, like I said, you can find it on the internet. Um, I did not, I will not claim to have made up this saying, but I also don't know who to give the original credit to. It's just something that I found on the internet. Um, I embellished the bottom with some jute twine. I didn't really even tie a bow. I just tied a simple knot and then let the leftover strings just kind of hang down. And that was it for this project, you guys. This is such a great Cricut blank. Whitney does a lot of Cricut blanks over on her channel and this is one of the ideas that I got when she did a Cricut blank. But right there you guys can see what it says. 
This is absolutely perfectly fitting for my family. And I think that this sign would go so cute next to like a family photograph. This wood right here, I just got from the Home Depot. These are called furring sticks. They are the size of one inch by two inches. So they are, I think these are in like eight feet length. They are not expensive because they are furring sticks. They're not sounded down as nice, but they're really, really nice to use. And I love using them for frames. So right here, I'm just getting them cut down to the size that I want. So I wanted a bigger piece of decor to kind of hang on my wall above a shelf that I have. I have a cute little shiplap wall in my home and I'm always looking for something to kind of hang in the back. And I love how people have been decorating with frames or window frames. So I decided to make my own window frame. So right here, I'm pre-drilling all of the holes that I will be using and screwing into because this helps to um, helps your wood to not split by pre-drilling. This right here is the process that I do. It's called a dado, D-A-D-O is what it is. This is a dado um, cut. And this is just basically where I'm cutting into the wood, but I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm cutting a notch into the wood and I'm cutting it about, I'm cutting it equally halfway through the wood. So I measured it on um, the side of the board and then I raised the blade of my skill saw right um, I'm sorry my table saw up and you can see that I just cut a notch out and I wanted it to match the two boards exactly so I just taped these together with painters tape and I ended up cutting out two notches so you can see that there's these two boards have two notches and then I did this to other boards so the idea of it is that you can push the notches in so that once they lay on each other right there they become flush so this is what I do to make the crossings in a window frame so I'm using some wood glue right here to glue these together and then I'm gonna clamp these down and I'm making um, kind of a, a multi-pane window, a wooden window, and I really want it to look like an old wooden frame window pane. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys. Once I, I clamp that to make sure that I let that dry and I let that dry for like overnight. Once that was done, you can see that we have the inner workings of our window frame and I didn't have to try to put little pieces on either side. Otherwise, I would have had to have cut that into what, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven pieces and then tried to screw them in or glue them in, which you can do, especially if you have a Craig jig because then you can hide your cuts on the back. I do have a Craig jig and I did not use it for this particular project, which I'm regretting because you can see that even though I pre-drilled some of the wood, it still split when I drilled into it. So after a little bit more drilling and lots of screws, um, I went ahead and I put this together. I struggled with this for a minute because I didn't use finishing screws. There's such a thing, please use finishing screws. Once I realized that I had grabbed the wrong kind of screws, I struggled for like three or four, um, of the screw holes and then I remembered that I wasn't using finishing screws so I grabbed those and they worked so much better so I will try to have those linked down below for you because the finishing screws you guys they are worth it do not skip them they they really do help your projects look better and they they bring your pieces of wood together so much better and there's minimal splitting of your wood so as you saw there I just stained the wood in the color Jacobian it's one of my favorite brown color stains it's by Minwax I can have that link down below as well. And then I just used a chippy brush to do a very heavy layer of white chalk paint. But I wanted this to look mostly white with some of the brown coming through because like I said, we wanted to keep, I wanted to keep some of the rusticness of this wood. This size, this frame, oh my goodness, this window pane measures three feet in width and about 18 no it might be 20 it's about 20 inches tall so here it is above my shelf like i was saying i love using it as a background to hang on the wall it's a really great filler and you can change out the wreaths throughout the season and that's it guys thank you so much for watching and thank you for being here it has been so good to get more videos out for you guys if you guys like this video then please consider subscribing because I do DIYs on this channel for every season and for every holiday and for everything that's coming up some fun home projects so I've got a bunch of stuff and a bunch of plans for this channel coming your way so if you guys are interested in that please hit the subscribe button please leave this video a comment give it a thumbs up if you like it and thank you so much for those of you who are still here at the end for those of you who don't know what the end segment is something that I do at the end of each
each one of my videos so that I can give you something back and add more value to your lives. I have a really fun one for you guys. If you guys remember about a year ago, I did a video called um, Be a Mr. Jensen. For those of you who remember, leave a comment down below if you already knew this, but for those of you who don't, I will have that video linked down below. But basically, the gist of the story is that there was a little boy who was always getting in trouble and he thought that he was a problem, but a teacher pulled him aside and said, you're not a problem. You're just, you're a drummer. And he became a world famous drummer, a motivational speaker, he travels, he does amazing things, all because this teacher, Mr. Jensen, believed in him and looked past what everybody else saw as a problem. So today I wanna to share my own personal story for those of you who already knew that video. This is a follow up to that from last year because I actually did not share the story, but I wanna share my own Mr. Jensen story with you guys. And that is with the teacher that I was in school with and I was in high school. It was actually a college class. I was taking English 1010 and it was a really big deal. And I was going through some things in my life that I was struggling with and so I decided to be a little bit careless reckless and rebellious. This is definitely a very, very vulnerable story that I'm sharing with you guys, so hopefully you don't judge me too harshly, but it was also a huge part of my growing up and my education, it was a big deal. So my English 1010 teacher, I just decided to check out. I wasn't interested in school anymore, I didn't care, and I decided to stop trying. And so I didn't study, I didn't read, I didn't do any of the things that I was asked, and every time the test would come around, I was not prepared for the test. I would use a pencil to fill out my answers, and then we would correct our own tests, and I would try to discreetly erase my answers and change them to the correct answer. So yes, I was cheating. I was cheating and I didn't care, and I didn't feel bad about it. After about four or five tests, my teacher caught on, but he didn't say anything to me. He knew exactly what I was doing, so the next test that came up, he actually, we filled them all out, and he didn't let us correct our own tests. He said, I'm going to correct your own tests today, and I was like, oh. Oh no. Oh I was like, I gotta find a way to, because I still wanted, I still cared enough about my grade, I guess. I cared enough to cheat, but I didn't care enough to do the work. I went ahead. <laughs> Guys, this is hard. This is a vulnerable story for me. Knowing that I was going to fail this test miserably and I couldn't cheat the way that I normally had, I waited until he was in a different classroom for fourth period because he was the choir teacher. My math class, I broke into his office. I found the file of tests, pulled out mine, and I erased all my answers and copied another person's test so that it was hopefully my chance at getting a good grade on the test and then I put it all back. Of course, he caught me. I didn't know at the time, but he caught me, pulled me in his office um, a few days later and said, when I saw this test, it was the, the answers were really quite wrong. And now I'm looking at it and the answers all are all really quite right. And he had ended up taking a copy of my test so that he could see that I had clearly cheated, you guys. Clearly cheated. So bad. It was so bad. And my attitude was, all right, well, cool. Peace. Thought he was gonna kick me out of his class and he didn't. And I was like, okay, whatever. I still didn't try. I would come to, I, I, I was skipping his class. I was sloughing, is what we called it. We, I was sloughing his class. Or if I was in class, I would just very rudely put my head down on my desk and I would go to sleep. This is a really long story, guys. Stay with me. I'm sorry. Stay with me. <laughs> leave a leave an emoji down below if you're still with me for this part of the story. Anyways, what ended up happening was life-changing. This teacher didn't give up on me. He believed in me. He cornered me in the library at about a week after that and he came and asked me, he said, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just getting a book. And he said, no, what are you doing with your life? And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And I really was lost I seriously was truly I was just lost and he said you are wasting talent he said you are smart and you have so much potential and you are wasting it he said I know that you are better than this he said how would I make you a deal if you come to class every single day if you try if you listen if you stay awake basically, if you study from here on out there's only six weeks left if you do that for the next six weeks I will pass you on all of your tests because I, he knew I had been cheating all of them he said I will give you I will give you an A on those tests and I said why 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 would you do that? I do not deserve that. And he said, I know you don't. I know you don't deserve that. He said, I know you have potential. You are worth so much more than what you can see in yourself. Guys, I was like, what? This man who didn't know me, he cared about me. He didn't know my situation. He didn't pry. He didn't ask about my home life. He didn't ask what I was going through. He, he kept his nose out of it and he just said, I'll make you a deal. I kept up that end of the deal and it was the biggest lesson I could have learned ever. Life lesson, huge life lesson, huge life lesson. I kept on my end of the deal. I came, I engaged, I learned, and I got an A in the class, just like you promised. But he gave me so much more than an A. He taught me values, he taught me to love myself, he taught me to know my potential and my worth, 
and to just to try to just to not give up you guys it was amazing so I'm gonna end this video because I know that story was really long I have found a mr. Jensen in my life please let me know down below if you guys have ever had a Mr. Jensen opportunity in your life or if you guys have been a Mr. Jensen to somebody. And my challenge to you is to find a way to be a Mr. Jensen to someone else. Thank you guys so much for watching. That video will be linked down below for you. Leave a comment, all the things, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.